it is set in 1956 in the city of Chicago, in a simple and quiet-looking fashion store owned by an elderly man named Leonard Burling. Mr. Leonard is not actually a native of the United States but a British citizen who moved to the U.S. a few years ago. Previously, Mr. Leonard had worked in the best fashion store in the world located in the city of London for several years, then decided to move for several reasons. After moving to the city of Chicago, Mr. Leonard started his own fashion shop and hired a beautiful woman named Mabel Sean as his assistant. All the clothes from Mr. Leonard's shop are well known in the city of Chicago and several wealthy families in the city have personally made his shop their regular shop. One of the families who are regular customers at his shop is the Boyle family. The Boyle family is known as one of the most influential and powerful mafia groups in the city of Chicago. The Boyles often visited Mr. Leonard's shop to order suits or to simply send letters to their correspondent through the mailbox in the shop. Mr. Leonard has deliberately provided a mailbox in his shop so that customers can leave tips or messages in the city. That night, the only son of the Boyle family named Richie Boyle came to Mr. Leonard's shop to pick up the letter sent by their correspondent. Richie came with Mr. Boyle's confidant named Francis. Mr. Leonard seemed unperturbed by their arrival and was not curious about the letters to the Boyles, and was busy doing his job as a tailor. In one of the letters, Francis finds a letter sent by a mafia organization called The Outfit. Richie then asked Mr. Leonard to leave the room for a while because they felt that this letter was quite private and confidential. In the lobby, Mabel shows a gift in the form of a snowball to Mr. Leonard. Mabel said that the gift was sent by an acquaintance of her. Mabel really likes to collect snowballs that contain various beautiful places in the world such as the Eiffel Tower, Big Ben Tower, or Barcelona, because Mabel aspires to travel the world. Mabel expressed her astonishment at Mr. Leonard who could go and open a shop anywhere but chose the city of Chicago as a place to live. After Richie and Francis left, Mr. Leonard then told Mabel that a man who worked at the clock shop beside their shop had asked Mr. Leonard to be introduced to Mabel, but Mabel felt uninterested in the invitation because she was already close to someone. Mr. Leonard then concludes that Mabel has a special relationship with Richie because he has seen them flirt with each other. While folding the napkin, Mr. Leonard warns Mabel to be careful because Richie is a member of the Mafia who is often associated with violence and weapons. Mabel admits that she is aware of the dangerous Boyle's family, but feels that she can still handle Richie. After that, Mabel said that she wanted a raise so she could save up to travel the world, but Mr. Leonard said that he could give her a raise if her skills were better especially to do simple things like folding a washcloth properly. After the shop closed, Mabel returned home while Mr. Leonard chose to stay in the shop longer because he still had some work to do. Late at night, Mr. Leonard is fast asleep at his desk and dreams about his family's past and flames. Shortly after, Mr. Leonard woke up hearing the sound of someone opening his shop door. It turned out that the voice came from Mabel and Richie who accidentally met at that place to spend time together. That means, Mr. Leonard's conjecture regarding the romantic relationship between Mabel and Richie has been proven correct. That night, Richie tells Mabel about his adopted brother, Francis. Francis thought that there was a traitor in their family who had secretly leaked information to their rival mafia group called La Fontaine. Richie didn't really like Francis because Richie's father, Roy Boyle, always trusted Francis and relied on him more than his own biological son. Richie never thought of Francis as his brother or family because he was just a stranger who had saved his father from six bullets. Richie suspected that his father made Francis his confidant simply because he felt indebted to him. While listening to all the conversations between Richie and Mabel, Mr. Leonard accidentally dropped an object from his hand and made a sound that made them aware. However, Mr. Leonard was able to quickly return to his desk and pretend to be asleep there. After that, Mabel took Richie out of the shop because she didn't want to wake Mr. Leonard and disturb his sleep. A few days later, Richie and Francis returned to Leonard's shop to pick up the mail as they usually did every week. That night, Francis and Richie again find an envelope sent by the Mafia group The Outfit, containing a letter and a cassette. After that, Francis and Richie left Mr. Leonard's shop to report the matter to Mr. Roy. That same evening, Francis and Richie came back to Mr. Leonard's shop in a hurry. Francis carried Richie who was injured with a gunshot wound to the stomach, into the back room where Mr. Leonard used to work. Later, Francis contacts Mr. Roy that he and Richie have been attacked by the La Fountain mob group and are currently hiding in Leonard's shop. Mr. Roy said that he would come there soon to pick them up. After that, Francis asked Mr. Leonard to stitch up the wound on Richie's body so that the bleeding could stop. Mr. Leonard was hesitant at first because he had never stitched up someone's wounds, but he ended up doing so because he had little experience in combat before. Richie fell unconscious from the unbearable pain remembering that the wounds on his body were stitched up without any anesthetic at all. After successfully suturing Richie's wound, 
Mr. Leonard was finally able to stop Richie's bleeding. Meanwhile, Francis took the tape that was in the suitcase and asked Mr. Leonard to look after Richie for a while. Mr. Leonard refused and asked Francis to take Richie and his suitcase because he did not want to get involved in the troubles and conflicts of the Boyle family. Even so, Francis insisted that Richie stay longer because Leonard's shop was the only safe place for now. Francis had to leave immediately because he had to find a cassette player so he could open the contents of the tape. Francis then explained that the tapes were recordings of the wiretapping of a member of the Boyle family. He suspects that there is a traitor among the Boyle's family who cooperates with the FBI, and then installs a bug in one of the places the Boyle's usually visit. Previously, Francis and Richie had intended to play the tape elsewhere, but members of the La Fountain group ambushed them, injuring Richie. Many Mafia groups want to get the tapes to destroy the Boyle family, so Francis must immediately find a cassette player and play the tape to find out who the traitor among their family is. Moments after Francis had left the shop, Richie finally came to his senses. Mr. Leonard claimed to have known the story about the tapes and the traitor to the Boyle family from Francis. Mr. Leonard then asked Richie if he suspected anyone in their family of being a traitor. Mr. Leonard then said that the traitor might be someone close to the Boyle family but not part of the Boyle family. After that, Mr. Leonard sat in his chair sewing cloth and said that he was the traitor who had leaked information to their enemy. Hearing this, Richie was silent for a while, then laughed loudly because he felt that his words were just a joke. Mr. Leonard also laughed along with Richie and then continued to sew. Richie said that Mr. Leonard could not be a traitor because he was just an ordinary tailor. Hearing this, Mr. Leonard then explained that he was not a tailor but a cutter. There is a difference between a tailor and a cutter, in that whoever has the thread and the needle can become a tailor. As for himself, he has studied for years at the best fashion store in the world called The Row. Mr. Leonard had spent a long time as an apprentice at the place before he finally got permission to open his own shop. After that, Mr. Leonard again talked about Francis insisting on finding the traitor in their family, then said that it was possible that the traitor was Francis himself. Moments later, Francis returned to Leonard's shop. Before Francis met Richie, Mr. Leonard had whispered to Francis that Richie suspected him of being a traitor, and Richie had opened the suitcase he had left earlier. That means, Mr. Leonard is playing between Richie and Francis to make them suspicious of each other. Richie, influenced by Mr. Leonard's previous words, began to interrogate Francis and asked why of the many shots fired by La Fountain's men, only he was hit while Francis was not injured at all. Francis replied that that night he was just being lucky. Francis then said that he would take the tape to the cassette screening right then and there, but Richie forbade it because he wanted to wait for his father who would soon come to pick them up. Things got so heated between Richie and Francis that they started fighting with each other over the tape. Until finally, when Richie and Francis realized that the suitcase was empty, they immediately pointed guns at each other. Richie fired one shot but missed, while Francis's shot hit Richie's neck and killed him. Francis immediately searched the tape Richie had supposedly hidden. Shortly after, Mr. Roy and his men arrived at Mr. Leonard's shop. Francis, he felt a little panicked and immediately asked Mr. Leonard to hide Richie's body and buy some time so he could clean the floor of Richie's bloodstains. By the time Mr. Roy walked into the shop, the floor was clean and Francis had enough time to fabricate a lie about Richie's whereabouts. Francis then explained that Richie had left with a tape from the outfit without telling him where he was going. Mr. Roy then asked Francis to immediately go find Richie and bring him back. Mr. Roy waited while talking to Mr. Leonard. He said that currently, there is a largest mafia organization in the world called The Outfit, which has networks in various countries in Europe and America. Mr. Roy then explained that the Boyle family had received an offer from the organization to become their alliance. That's because the Boyle family is the only mafia group that dares to fight La Fountain. That's why the outfit helped them by sending the FBI wiretapping tape so they could find out who the traitor in the Boyle family was. Mr. Leonard looked surprised and asked why Mr. Roy was telling him all that, because before that, Mr. Roy had never told him anything about the affairs of their group. It turned out that Mr. Roy realized that Richie was currently at Leonard's shop because his coat was still hanging there. Mr. Roy knew that Richie would never leave his coat when he went out in winter so he was sure that Mr. Leonard had something to hide. Mr. Roy threatens Mr. Leonard with a gun to tell what really happened. But before he could explain anything, Francis suddenly entered the room carrying Mabel. Mr. Leonard who was afraid that Mabel would be killed by Francis, then explained that Richie was embarrassed because Francis managed to shoot four of La Fountain's men while he didn't shoot anyone. So Richie decided to go back to Left Fountain's place to shoot people from Left Fountain to prove his worth to Roy. Mr. Leonard also explained the reason why he didn't tell him this earlier because Richie forbade him to tell Mr. Roy so that he would not worry. Mr. Roy then asked Francis why Francis had brought Mabel. 
Francis explains that Richie probably went to Mabel's house because she was Richie's girlfriend. Hearing this, Mr. Roy asked Mabel where Richie was right now, but Mabel admitted that she didn't know anything about Richie's whereabouts. Francis then interrupts Mabel's words and says that he saw a bloodstain on Mabel's carpet which was probably Richie's blood. Mr. Roy, who felt he was losing his temper, began to force Mabel to tell the truth using force. Mr. Leonard who saw all this, immediately stopped Mr. Roy and tried to calm him down. It turns out that Mr. Leonard previously had a wife and daughter, but both of them had died in a fire, so he already considered Mabel as his own daughter. Shortly after, the phone rang, and Mr. Leonard immediately picked up the phone. Mr. Leonard said that the call came from Richie who claimed to be hiding from La Fountain and asked to be picked up at street number 31. Hearing this, Mr. Roy and his men rushed to pick up Richie. Francis chose to stay and said that he would look after Mr. Leonard and Mabel just in case he lied to them. After that, Mr. Leonard explained that he deliberately gave the address so that the La Fountain group could attack Mr. Roy and his men. In addition, Mr. Leonard also explained that Mabel was the traitor they had been looking for all along. After establishing a special relationship with Richie, Mabel has many opportunities to dig up information about the Boyles family and leak the information to La Fountain so she can get some money in return. Mabel knows that Francis will eventually find out, so Mabel asks the FBI for help in wiretapping and arresting the entire Boyle family. That way, Mabel would be safe because the FBI would get rid of the Boyles. All of Mabel's plans have been known by Mr. Leonard, and he has deliberately left it because Mabel really wants to earn a lot of money to travel the world. Mr. Leonard was also the one who hid the tapes in order to protect Mabel. Shortly after, La Fountain and his men came to Leonard's shop to pay Mabel money in exchange for the tape. But before that, Francis asked Mr. Leonard and Mabel to use some code after La Fountain gave them the money, so he could get out of the back room and kill La Fountain. After La Fountain came and took the tape, he gave Mabel the money they agreed to beforehand. Unfortunately, Mabel and Mr. Leonard betrayed Francis and informed La Fountain of his whereabouts. As a result, Francis died after being shot several times by La Fountain's men. After La Fountain and his men left, Mr. Leonard told Mabel that he was the one who had loaded the tape and put it in the mailbox with the organization named the outfit to give to the Boyles family. He did all that so he could create a rift between the Boyles, and the cassette tape that was given to La Fountain earlier was a fake one because he had replaced it with his own voice recording. The original tape is still in Mr. Leonard's possession, and he deliberately kept it so that Mabel could hand it over to the FBI, so that the FBI could get rid of the Mafia group from the Boyle family and also the La Fountain group. Mr. Leonard then told Mabel to travel the world with the money she just got. That night, Mr. Leonard packed up his things and then set fire to his entire shop to destroy all evidence. But apparently, Francis, who was still alive, suddenly got up and shot Mr. Leonard. Fortunately, the shot missed and only injured his arm. Mr. Leonard then explained who he really was to Francis. He was previously a mobster just like Francis, but after he left his boss and went to London, his boss's men managed to find his residence and killed his family in a fire so he moved to Chicago to start a new life and become a better person. The film closes with a scene where Mr. Leonard leaves his shop in Chicago to live a better life. The moral we can take this time is that this film can make us paranoid about every tailor around us, because it could be that people with jobs that we often meet every day like them are actually mafia or secret agents who can kill someone.